reason why we do this now, we do this in, in December. We don't wait until January 1st to start this. You're already behind the game. We're doing this to make sure that you maximize your December. You don't just call it in. Most people call in the month of December. They just give up on it. They think people are busy. People are too busy traveling, holidays, kids are off school, whatever. So they don't push forward, slow down and retract while you keep driving forward. You keep fucking rolling and, and accomplish and finish off the things you need to finish off to end this year strong. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And today we're talking about keeping the score. We're going to talk about a deep level of regular self reflection. And this is, I'm going to share with you the exact strategy I use with one on one coaching clients, with clients in the group coaching program, the Freak Father Alliance, which is a men's mentorship group coaching program. I'm going to share with you the exact blueprint of every area that I have these men. And I use myself, scoring myself and rating myself. I use this on a weekly basis. Today, we're talking about on the bigger picture on a yearly basis, but you should use this template weekly, monthly, and yearly, even mix in quarterly if you want to. That, that's up to you. We're going to break this all down here on the Steve Eckert Show podcast today. We're going to go in deep. And the Steve Eckert Show is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business so you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms, all while you create your own personal freak freedom lifestyle. This is all about transforming yourself from where you are to where you want to be, where you need to be, and your family and yourself deserves for you to be. We're talking about learning to weaponize everything. And the only way to do that is to keep score, to keep track, to reflect. You have to look back each week. I do this every single Sunday. I have all my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients do this every Sunday and all the group, the men in the men's group do this every single week. But then we're also now doing this on a yearly basis. This is the perfect timing. This is actually the first segment of a three-part series in the next three weeks here on the Steve Eckert Show on ending out the year and setting up the success for the upcoming year, right? So today we're talking about giving yourself a score, how to use this scoreboard. And we're just going to go over the scoreboard and you can use it again weekly or yearly. And this is going to set up the tone for next week to go into reviewing, reflecting, and revisiting the entire previous year of 2023, and then previewing, planning, and preparing to dominate in the year of 2024. That's what you have a little upcoming sneak peek of what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. A three-part series started today with this OTD, this Operate to Dominate Daily Battle Reflection Scorecard or Weekly Battle Reflection Scorecard. But I also want you to do this on a yearly basis and I want you to share your feedback, what your scores are. So there's 22 categories that you're going to rate yourself in. And listen, Matt, Matt, you have to keep score. And, and then I take some of these, there's a few of these, the, my, my main kind of five of these five to and sometimes even eight, depending on the, the mood I'm in, every single night, I'll rate myself on these. You give yourself a score of one to five just to see how the day was. Then I do them all for the week, every single week, every Sunday, and then on a yearly big picture. Now, keep this in mind. When you're giving yourself a score, you're thinking of a whole life score, a life score meaning personal and professional combined, a one to five, and also scoring it based on the criteria that I'm going to give you how to think about it and how to score it. So I'm going to give you a, a, a trait or a term or a phrase or whatever you want to call it. Let's say the, the term role model. You're not going to score yourself till I am done explaining how I want you to rate yourself in that area. Then you'll score yourself as a total life score in that area within the parameters of the time frame you're talking about. So if you're doing it for a week, you're thinking about, all right, how did I do as a role model only in these last seven days? Or if you're doing it for the year, how did I do as an average over the last 12 months? So not just how are you doing right now, because maybe you're having a real good day, but the last 364 days fucking sucked. You have to judge it accordingly. You have to score it accordingly. You have to be brutally freaking honest with yourself because you lying on these scores, you lying on this paper is just doing a disservice to yourself 
and to your people around you, your family and your kids and your freaking future and the upcoming year, 2024, that you need to be worthy of acquiring success and domination as you go into this year. So 22 categories, one through five on each. Let's kick it off. And, and, and some of them I'll even, I'll share with, you know, what, what some of my scores were and whatever else. So let's start off a role model. I want you to think of a role model that you, you are having influence and persuasion on a regular basis. You're the type of man your kids want to emulate. You're, you're guiding and treating your people well, and they want to be like you. You're the role model, husband, father, leader, entrepreneur, man, and human. That's how I want to think about role model. Now, again, don't forget, combine personal and professional together, giving yourself an average score. Right now, since we're talking about yearly review, I want you to first score yourself on this on a yearly basis for the year, for the previous 12 months. And then again, you'd do this again every single week going forward of 2024. How did you do in that? Only in that week. So maybe you had a bad week on your fitness or whatever. So that, that one's going to be a low score just for that week. Doesn't mean your yearly score is low. So again, we're right now, I want you to score this. On the last 12 months, the entire year of 2023. And there's a reason why we do this now. We do this in, in December. We don't wait till January 1st to start this. You're already behind the game. We're doing this to make sure that you maximize your December. You don't just call it in. Most people call in the month of December. They just give up on it. They think, People are busy. People are too busy traveling, holidays, kids are off school, whatever. So they don't push forward. Listen, let all those other slow slouch ass motherfuckers slow down and retract while you keep driving forward. You keep fucking rolling and, and accomplishing shit and finish off the things you need to finish off to end this year strong. And we're going to dive deep into, deeper into that even next week, which is where we, we talk about reviewing, reflecting, and revisiting the previous year as a whole. And that sets a tone for the week after that, where we're going to talk about, again, previewing, planning, and preparing for the upcoming year. These are all pieces of the puzzle. And this just fa falls right in line with all the previous episodes. We're basically coaching you up here three weeks in a row. And, and, and if you look back, it's been for the entire year, we've been coaching you up here on the Steve Eckert Show. You could watch these episodes and you're getting high level coaching every single fucking week. So pay attention, take notes, listen and re-listen, quit bullshitting. All right. Role model. What is your score on role model? I explained how I want you to think about it. Give yourself a score on a role model for the entire year, combining personal and professional. That was number one. Role model, a score of one to five. All right, number two. Number two is discipline. Discipline is having structure and control and a strategy and, and tactics. Your discipline with your integrity about who you are and who you claim to be. Your discipline in a huge one, especially here for men, is controlling your emotions. I'll tell you what, the, one of the number one traits to success is discipline. And the number one aspect of discipline is having discipline and controlling your emotions. Emotional discipline. And we did an entire episode on emotional discipline. So go back and check that out. So also discipline, I want you to think about your mental toughness. Again, your emotional discipline, but also your emotional resilience. Where you do get knocked off track, you're able to bounce back and get back centered, back focused, and back on track. You're disciplined also because you trust the process. You're disciplined in your commitment and your consistency, of course, with your fitness and nutrition. And if you watched that previous episode on emotional discipline, we call it staying in the green. It's just a frame we use, a very simple way to talk about staying centered, staying focused, maintaining your bearing, maintaining your emotional discipline, staying in the green. So rate yourself there on number two, one through five, discipline. So literally just write down the number, write down the trait discipline, listen to the way I'm telling you to think about it, then combine your personal professional score and give yourself a score of one to five out of 20, 22 categories that we're going to score. It was a total of 110 and then you'll see what your, your total scores. All right. Number three is energy. Energy is meaning you're, you're generating your own energy and managing your own mental, emotional, and physical energy well. And, but you're, and you're operating with enthusiasm. You have endurance and strength and durability and passion to go the long haul, to see things through to the end, to, to have that infectious passion and spirit and enthusiasm for life. And not only are you generating your own, you are an energy, a power source, a nuclear power source for other people. So number three, energy, give yourself a score one through five. All right. Number four is confidence. 
confidence. You have basically faith and belief in yourself. You're operating with, with a certain type of attitude. The way you show up, the way you present yourself, the way you show up to every situation, you're showing up with confidence of, of, of how you intend to, with intentionality. And it's because you're prepared, because you've got your sets and reps in, you've gotten your practice in, you've gotten your training in, you put time into preparation. You're also confident in your ability to figure shit out. You're, you're confident in, and clear in your, the way you communicate. It shows in the way you communicate, the way you speak with clarity and focus. And you're confident the way you honor yourself and just honor the world and other people in general showing up, exuding that confidence, rate yourself on number four, confidence on a scale of one to five. Now, before I go on further, I want to make this clear. If this is a scale of one to 10, I would say 10 is probably pretty unattainable. But don't be the one that puts it as a, a afraid to put a five. On a scale of one to five, you are absolutely allowed to put a five. But you're also allowed to put a fucking one. And be brutally honest with yourself. But there are going to be certain ones that you're going to think, all right, maybe I'm a five, but there's room for improvement. That's still a five if you feel like it's a five. Think of a five being an A, a four being a B, and a C. It doesn't mean you're perfect. Of course, you could do always do even better, which is one of my themes and words of the year, which we'll get into two weeks from now when you, we help you create your own theme of the year, getting even better at shit. So with that in mind, confidence, one to five, give yourself a score. All right, number five is your kill score. Kill is your action and attack score, meaning you're able to push and press yourself you're able to push and pressure the people around you. You motivate yourself and motivate the people around you. Kill Your kill, action, and attack score is just able to get up off your ass, to walk the walk, to talk with your damn feet. That's what we're talking about. Not being a little bitch, just getting shit done, making shit happen, having a bias for action, a bias for movement, aggressively, violently, no holds barred approach to your day to your decision-making, to your problem-solving in every task, every relationship, and just life in general, killing it, killing the fear, killing the doubt, killing the procrastination. You are killing the day, attacking it with action, not half-assing, not procrastinating, not bullshitting. What's your kill score? Number five, score it on a scale of one to five. All right. Number six is your freak score. Now, if you want even more context to what your freak score is about, we did an entire episode on the definition of a freak. What is a freak? And another episode coming up on what is a freak father specifically. So a freak is just really the the next step above from that role model. It means just the being unique, being yourself, being polarizing when needed, living life on your own terms, marching to the beat of your own motherfucking drum, not giving a fuck what people that don't matter think about you, but absolutely do give a fuck what the people that do matter think of you. That's what the freak score is, living according to your true identity, your calling, your higher purpose, and doing it still with humility, integrity, and courage. So basically, being yourself without being an asshole. If you are an asshole, then don't be yourself. Absolutely don't be yourself. Unfuck yourself first so that you're just doing things the right way. So that's your freak score. Number six, give it a score one to five. Let's keep it rolling with number seven, which is clarity. Clarity just means you are so clear, crystal clear mental clarity. You know your purpose. You know your higher calling. You know your meaning in life. You know your why, and you're living intentionally towards it. You're clear on who you need to be for each situation on a regular basis. You're clear on your mission, your vision, your values, your goals, and your priorities, Don't forget, combine personally and professionally into a whole life score for the word clarity. One through five, that's number seven. Give yourself a score. All right, number eight is mindset slash positivity. Now, I put those together because I don't want to just say mindset because you could be saying, well, is it a good mindset, a bad mindset? What type of mindset? A positive mindset. So mindset slash positivity, meaning you just find you are capable of finding the upside to everything, of reframing shit in your mind to always find the win, to find the lesson. You weaponize everything. Nothing can bring you down because you are focused. That is the type of mindset we're talking about. So what is your score on number eight mindset slash positivity on a score one to five? Give yourself a rating and let's move on to nine. Number nine is your obsessed score, meaning you are just obsessed 
with attaining your goals. You're obsessed with growth. You're obsessed with leveling up. You're obsessed with learning and developing new skills. Just constant and never-ending improvement. How obsessed are you? Personally and professionally combined, score of one to five, number nine is obsessed. All right, rolling in to number 10. I want you to think of leadership. Before I even give you how, how I tell you I want you to think of it, I want you to, in your head, what does leadership mean to you? What type of leader are you? And, and take a second and think of that. Take those traits that you come up with, the type of leader you are and what leadership means to you. And I want you to take that and put it under the umbrella of what I'm about to talk to you. Because whatever you thought of is what I want you to rate on because that's the kind of leader that you are, hopefully. And put it under the umbrella of you just make everyone around you better. Like Think about it. No matter what thing you said leadership means to you, I guarantee you it falls under the umbrella category of you make everyone around you freaking better. So take in everything you said, you thought of, of what you think makes a good leader and add into that, make everyone around you better. Think about that and give yourself a score one through five on leadership. Don't forget, combine personal and professional. Number 11 is mission. The mission. You are able to move the mission forward. You're moving the needle. You you're just find it necessary to be your best and make success a must, performing with excellence for those who are along and need you and are on this mission with you. Your mission, you put the mission above yourself. Now, here's the one thing to that. Putting a mission above yourself doesn't mean you neglect yourself and don't work out, don't take care of your own foundations. When we say the mission over the man, it's a military phrase, the mission over the man. And the number one Marine Corps leadership objective is mission accomplishment. And number two is troop welfare. But here's the, the kind of unwritten rule about that. It's assuming that you are taking care of yourself on a basic needs level. Like you are locked in and dialed in. That's what it's assuming. So it doesn't mean go forward with the mission before you even take care of your basic foundational needs because you're going to go along with the mission and you're not going to serve the mission properly and you're doing a disservice to the mission and your fellow Marines and your fellow people and your family and your kids if you're not first taking care of that foundational level. So I want you to be clear about that. It doesn't mean you just put the mission and neglect yourself and turn yourself into a bag of shit because you're going to be a shitty leader on that mission and the mission will probably not get accomplished. So this is assuming you have the basic foundational levels taken down uh, and you have your house in order so that you can put the mission forward. So give yourself a score for mission. Number 11, one through five. All right, number 12 is connect. Connect is meaning you are focused on intentionally generating, cultivating, and elevating your relationships and communication with other freaking humans. You're creating social experiences. You're not just being a lone wolf, stuck in your silo, thinking you're going to do everything by, on your own. You are connecting. Now, don't forget, we're combining personal and professional. So if you are constantly connecting on the professional side and making all these business relationships and all this other stuff and networking, and you give yourself a five, but on the personal side, you're just sitting in your little fucking cave and avoiding all humanity. And that's a one, that's a five and a one. That's probably a, a, a two and a half, which is really a two. When in doubt, round down, because you're probably giving yourself more freaking credit than you should be. You want to, again, brutally honest with yourself. There's no purpose in lying and bullshitting to yourself. Nothing fucking more disgusting than a man who's lying to himself, especially on a self-reflection drill. Like, you know the fucking truth. So let's, let's attack the truth. Let's deal with the truth. Let's face the damn truth. How about that? All right, number 13 is productivity. Now, people think that productivity is getting more shit done. That's what people just think productivity is. Getting more shit done. That is not productivity. Productivity is getting more quality, excellent work done in less time so that you have more time to do the shit you want to be doing or more time to do more of that quality, excellent work that you should be doing. That's what real productivity is. Productivity is working on the things that matter the most. It means you're sticking to your time blocks on a regular basis. You're not falling victim to distraction or time or energy-wasting activities or events or freaking people. You're not being distracted. You're working on new skills and skills you need to improve. You're, you're productive with your, your free time, your off time with reading, studying, researching, just constantly getting better. You are just productive. 
personally, professionally, one through five. Number 13 is productivity. All right, let's go to number 14 is your create score. Now, this is a a hard one sometimes to think of on, on both personally and professionally, but just use your imagination and you create tangible things that move the needle. You're creative. You're creating shit. Now, personally, that could be, I don't know, you're creating a, like right, right now I'm working on creating a, a family trip around the country where we're going to hit the 48 states in 48 days into a different workout in each 48 states on a family road trip, doing a workout in 48 states in 48 days. Just taking the RV around, that cre- that's creating something. I'm creating that experience on the personal side, but on the professional side, maybe it's creating content or marketing materials or systems and processes, maybe creating an entire business from scratch. Or on the personal side, you're, you're creating a, a house, you're building a house, you're creating a freaking doomsday bunker, I don't, whatever it is, creating shit, getting things created, manual, sales pages, emails, whatever. You're actually creating shit that's going to be used to move the mission forward, to move the needle forward, personally and professionally. Number 14 is create, score yourself one to five. All right, number 15. Don't forget this 22, so we're coming that down, that down the back end. 15 is your close score. Now, we're, when we say close and being a closer, yeah, we're talking about business or making moves in the direction that will close business soon, but that's not all we're talking about when we say your close score. We're also saying that you're not leaving shit open-ended. You're not leaving things undone. You are seeing things through to the finish line. You are getting things completed. Not letting open loops stay all throughout your all, all throughout the year. Like you've saw, saw things through to the finish line this past year. Don't forget, we're rating this self right now in a year. And when you're thinking about it on a weekly basis, you just rate yourself on a weekly basis. But you saw things through to the finish line. You're not leaving shit open ended. You're closing the freaking loops, closing the deals, and moving things forward, <laughs> moving the needle forward to the next step, to the next progress. Always driving freaking forward. Keep it rolling. Your close score, numbers 15, one through five. All right, cool. Number 16 is your courage score. Having courage, meaning you're not afraid to ask for freaking help. You're not afraid to ask questions because you're afraid you're going to feel dumb. You're not suffering in silence. You're not being that lone wolf that we talked about. You are having courage to, to be your real self, to share your real thoughts, your real feelings. Courage to stand up for yourself or to stand up for those that can't protect themselves. It's a, one of the lines in the Project Creed about protecting those that can't protect themselves. That takes courage. Also, to stand up for what you think is right, what you believe in, despite if it's the popular opinion. You might be in a room that's everyone against you, but if you know and believe in your freaking heart that this is the right thing to do, that is courage. Say, no, I don't agree with that. This is the way it should be. This is the right thing to do. Having the fucking balls to stand up for what you think is freaking right. That's courage. Personally, professionally, number 16, courage, rate it. All right, number 17 is family. Now, this is the way I want you to think about family. The next three coming up, family, fitness, and finances, which are the F-bombs of the project. I want you to think of it this way, family. So you're focusing on your family equally to your fitness and your finances. So when we say family, obviously we mean your family, your people, your close people. It could also mean your close friends are people who you consider family, even if they're not actually family. But you're focusing on them equally to your fitness and finances. On fitness, I don't want you to think physical fitness. Fitness literally means taking care of yourself, your own priorities, your basic foundational needs, your mental fitness, emotional fitness, and of course, physical fitness. Finances doesn't just mean you have a a budget set out. Finances means you uh, talking about your professional life and your work life and your career. That's what we're saying all balled up into finances. So think about it. When we say focused on family equally to fitness and finances, it means you are not letting your family get neglected because you're too busy and spending too much or most of your time taking care of your fitness, which is yourself, and take care of the finances, which is the business. You're not working so hard taking care of yourself. Yeah, your personal development, you want to do it, but not at the expense of your family. Yeah, you want to bust your ass and build an empire, but not at the expense of your family. So a family score, focusing on the family equally to the fitness and finances, basically making your family better on a, on a, on a regular basis, getting them closer on a regular basis, your spouse, your kids, your partner, whatever. You're creating memorable experiences on a regular basis. That would be tied into family. So give yourself a score on family. One through five is number 17. And number 18 is fitness. It's going to be the same perspective, the same way of thinking about it. You're focusing on your fitness equally to the family and finances. 
making getting that fitness better every day, moving it forward every day without neglecting the other other areas. So your 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 fitness score means you are not neglecting yourself because you're too busy working on the family and the finances. Like you're spending all the time putting everyone else ab- above yourself, putting the business above yourself, and you're getting fucking fat and out of shape and unhealthy and sick and lazy and unfulfilled. So fitness, focused on your fitness equally to family and finances. Number 18, give yourself a score according to that criteria. Finances, exact same criteria. You're focusing on, this is number 19, you're focusing on your finances equally to your family and your fitness. Meaning you're moving the finances, moving the business, moving the money, moving the professional life forward every single day. So you're focused on your finances equally to family and fitness, meaning you're not so focused on the family and and, and you can get caught up in that trap or so focused on yourself and working out and personal development that the business is neglected, that the finances are neglected. So you focus on your finances equally to the family and fitness. Give yourself a score. All right, coming up to the home stretch, the last few. Number 20 is your faith. Now, this could be for thought from a couple of different levels. If you if you go back to the episode on purpose, a few episodes back, we broke down the levels of purpose. And the highest level of purpose was a higher power, something outside yourself. The one right below that was your internal purpose, you, yourself. So outside yourself, then inside yourself. And then the third level was outside of yourself, meaning outside to, to, to other people and things. So that's why I want to think about faith on those different levels. So this could be your 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 belief, your faith, your spirituality in in in, in a, the universe, a higher power, your creator, God, whatever you want to call it, your faith in a higher calling, but also combining that together with your faith in yourself, your belief in yourself, your faith in the universe, your faith even in other people, but your faith and belief that you are capable of reaching your goals in those other F-bombs of the family, the fitness, and the finances. Belief in yourself and your ability to reach your goals in your family, your fitness, your finances, that is a huge part of faith. And then, of course, that higher level of faith. Combine all that together. Give yourself how faithful of a person, of a man are you. That's number 20. Number 21 is your fulfillment. You are basically saying that you are going to sleep, putting your head on the pillow at night, and you are like, damn, today was an awesome fucking day. Today was a fulfilling day. Today was a, a, a perfect day. This is the way life is meant to be lived. That's fulfillment. When you can tell yourself that, truthfully and honestly at the end of every single freaking day that you're living according to your purpose you're just full of life and living according to that purpose that we just talked about and that faith we just talked about and that higher calling we talked about both externally and inside yourself that's fulfillment different levels of fulfillment all combined number 21 give yourself a score on fulfillment and the last one number 22 is your no excuses score Now, your no excuses score is your ability to take responsibility and accountability for all your actions and all your people. Now, there's a difference between responsibility and accountability. No excuses is so fucking important to me. That's why I put it here to to bring things home. It's so important. It's tattooed on my fucking arm. If there's one thing that pushes my buttons, it's fucking excuses, complainers, and people blaming people. And I I recently just saw read about a study about excuses. Do you know that when you make excuses, when you complain and bitch and moan and you blame other people, you blame situations, you blame the government, you blame uh, the the circumstances or other people, that that literally makes you freaking dumber? Not only does it put you further away from your goals, it makes you dumber, but it also makes you have worse relationships with people because you're complaining and blaming and other people are seeing it and hearing it. They're seeing that that's what kind of character you have. So it's ruining your relationships, but it's literally making you dumber. It's literally shrinking the size of your brain because you're conditioning your brain to immediately take the survival, the easy way out to survive. And your brain wants that. It's built to have that survival mechanism in it that says, oh, whenever something hard happens, whenever something goes wrong or we fail, we blame other people. We make excuses. Good. So it's going to cut all those different neural pathways in your freaking brain and make it a short little tiny path and literally shrinking your brain, making you fucking dumber. And I always knew I was onto something by getting so pissed about excuses and motherfuckers who blame people and motherfuckers who complain all the time. There's nothing worse than a grown man bitching and moaning and complaining like a little fucking schoolgirl and gossiping and bitching at like nothing worse than it, making excuses and blaming everyone else and not taking responsibility. Nothing more fucking disgusting than that 
as a man. And if that's you, shame on you. Do something about it. And quit with the bullshit. Quit with the excuses. No excuses. Never make any. And never accept any. Now with all that combined, give yourself a score on number 22. No excuses. Don't forget. Never make any. But also never accept any. And in no excuses, that's also meaning you're not blaming people. You're not complaining. Think about that. You are taking responsibility. Another another line of the creed in the project is, I'm responsible for everything in my life and that gives me the power and control to change my circumstances. Now, if you're responsible for everything in your life, how could you, who could you blame except yourself, motherfucker? What are you going to complain about except for your lack of focus and kill and attack and action and discipline and confidence and energy? That's what you could complain about. Your own bullshit. Your own bullshit lies you're telling yourself. No excuses. Number 22. So that's 22 points. Five points each. You have a total of 110. What is your total score? And once you tally this up, I want you to look at your score and ask yourself, is this higher or lower than you expected it to be? And usually the answer is, wow, I didn't really think it was going to be that low. But the good news is this is giving you data. This is giving you self-feedback so you can have self-correction and you could change course. You can see what areas you're weak and, and struggling in. You can see what areas you're strong in so you can exploit those and let those areas you're strong in help the areas that you're weak in. And you can seek help and seek coaching like this is, this is what we dive into every single week in the Freak Father Alliance, the men's mentorship program. This is what we're talking about when we are, are talking about accountability and no excuses is rating yourself. Think about going to a, a basketball game and you the, the, the two teams are playing and at the, end, at the end of a certain undisclosed amount of time, the referees just blow the whistle and they say, all right, game's over. Game's over. Imagine that. And you don't know what the score is. You don't know how long it lasted. And they don't declare a winner or a loser. Imagine that. What is it? You need to keep score to know where you're going. You need statistics to have feedback and data on what you did right, what you did wrong, so you can get better every fucking day. That is what the path to self-mastery is. That's why we do this on a weekly basis, a small micro level on a daily basis, on this 22 point on a weekly basis, a monthly, quarterly, and right now, yearly. And that's what we do in in the, the Freak Father Alliance. In the Freak Father Alliance, basically I'm helping entrepreneur, entrepreneurial fathers and men to develop this no excuses mindset so that, they could build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning, and attack their mission to create their ideal lifestyle and time freedom for their families. Think about that. That's what we are literally creating and diving in as a group and a community every single fucking day and every single week. And there's seven days a week accountability with this, with the Freak Father Alliance. When we do a daily debrief, I'll actually do an entire episode on what we go through for the daily debrief. I think it'll be awesome for you to get a taste of that because I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you what we do. And then if you want some help in implementing it and accountability, you'll jump into the Freak Father Alliance. So if you want information about that, just send me a message. But I want to hear about your scores. I want to hear about what scores were, were strong, what scores were your, what were your weakest categories as a man, and what you're going to do to fix those lower scores. And then I also want to hear, if it was just personal or professional, would your scores have been a lot higher if you could rate that? Did combine them together, bring your scores down in certain, in certain areas? And which areas were those? And what brought it down? Did the personal bring it down or the professional bring it down in what categories? I love this data. It helps me out with moving forward or with even helping other men and coaching men. So I want all this data. I want all this feedback on how your numbers were, your breakdown of your numbers. So put it down there in the comments below. Let me know. And if you need help implement, implementing this and you want some deeper level of accountability, again, to build more muscle, get in the best shape of your life and stay in the best shape of your life all year long, to make more money, have more meaning, have more meaning and attack that mission that we're talking about to create your ideal lifestyle, which I call the freak freedom ideal lifestyle and creating time freedom for your families. Let me know and I'll send you all the information you need to know about the Freak Father Alliance Men's Mentorship Group Coaching Program. I will see you next time on the Steve Eckert Show. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.